Welcome to EPG Pathshala. I am Dr. Neeru Tandon from Department of English, VSST College, Kanpur. This module of paper 13 Linguistics has been written by Dr. Chaya Jain of VSST College, Kanpur. The name of this module is Classification and Description of Speech Sounds Consonants. We are dealing with English consonants in this particular module. In previous modules, many times we talked and discussed about speech sounds. We know that speech sounds, it has been divided into two parts, consonant and vowels. In this module number seven, we are just concentrating on the sounds of consonants. Because sounds are present in all languages regardless of orthography, linguists needed a way to represent the same sounds in different languages, no matter in which language they occur. Sounds are described not by how they sound to the ear, but rather how they are produced in the vocal tract. Sounds are produced by moving the articulators, things that can be moved within the vocal tract. Vocal tract is the combination of lips and the tongue. Speech involves producing sounds from the voice box. In English, there are no one-to-one -one relations between the system of writing and the system of pronunciation, producing sounds. The alphabet which we use to write English has 26 letters. But in English speech, sounds are approximately 44. The number of speech sounds in English varies from dialect to dialect. Now, English consonants and their importance is essential to understand. Consonant is a speech sound produced by completely or partly stopping the air being breathed out through the mouth. This is the definition given by Hornby Oxford Advanced Learners Dictionary. In fact, what Cambridge University Press has defined is consonant is a speech sound which is pronounced by stopping the air from flowing easily through the mouth, especially by closing the lips or touching the teeth with the tongue. We say B. B, B, this is lip, we are touching the lip. C, C, this is, we are just touching the tongue, touching the teeth with the tongue, C. So, different consonants are just pronounced in different ways. IPA or International Phonetic Alphabet uses a single symbol for each specific sound. Sometimes these symbols match the letters in English which represent these sounds. Sometimes they do not. IPA describes English consonants based on three things. One is voicing, how you voice it. Second is the place of articulation and the third is manner of articulation. Let us understand these three things. Consonant as a speech sound when it is articulated with complete or partial closure of the vocal tract like examples pronounced with the lips, pronounced with the front of the tongue, pronounced with the back of the tongue, pronounced in the throat and pronounced by forcing air through a narrow channel. They are also known as fricatives. And finally, like M, N, which have air flowing through the nose, nasals. Now in this connection, we must understand and revise English phonemes. Infants begin making sounds at birth. You cannot interpret those sounds, but they make certain sounds. They cry 
there is a sound in their crying also those early sounds in the form of cries can be easily recognized as the infant continues to mature cooing and babbling noises develop into consonants and vowel sounds these early pre consonants and pre vowel sounds gradually become shaped into words phoneme is the basic linguistic unit denoted by a character enclosed with forward slashes or square braces the symbol like this represents the vowel sound heard in the word teen articulatory phonetics all the sounds we make when we speak are the result of muscle contraction the muscles in the chest that we use for breathing produce the flow of air that is needed for almost all speech sounds muscles in the larynx produce many different modifications in the flow of air from the chest to the mouth after passing through the larynx the air goes through what we call the vocal tract which ends at the mouth and nostrils we call that part comprising the mouth the oral cavity and the part that leads to the nostrils the nasal cavity here the air from the lungs escapes into the atmosphere we have a large and complex set of muscles that can produce changes in the shape of the vocal tract and in order to learn how the sounds of speech are produced it is necessary to become familiar with the different parts of the vocal tract these different parts are called articulators and the study of them is called articulatory phonetics there are three anatomical and physiological factors the state of the glottis whether or not there is voice or vibration in the larynx number 2 the place of articulation like the part of the vocal apparatus with which the sound is most closely associated and the manner of articulation how the sound is produced you can see on your screen these are the organs of speech and by the labeling you can understand how the sound which sound is produced with the help of which organ you have seen that in this particular diagram the pharynx is a tube which begins just above the larynx it is about 7 cm long in women and about 8 cm in men and at its top end it is divided into two one part being the back of the oral cavity and the other being the beginning of the way through the nasal cavity the topic contains the word classification what is the classification of speech sounds now we understand how to produce sounds what are speech sound but how do we classify them so a complete description should include the production the transmission and the reception stages the most convenient and brief descriptive technique continues to rely on articulatory or an auditory judgments that vowels or on combination of both the consonants and the vowel there are bilabial and labiodental now lips are very important in speech you understand that they can be pressed together when i say pressed see my lips it is pressed when we produce the sounds p b we are pressing the lips p b you can just speak on your own you see that they are brought into contact with the teeth as in f f v v or rounded to produce the lip shape for vowels like o u o sounds in which the lips are in contact with each other are called bilabial with those with lip to teeth contact are called labiodental now the place of articulation when we talk about it you can see on the screen the chief points of articulation for english consonants are these two only bilabial and labiodental now there are dental and alveolar also the teeth both upper and lower they are shown at the front of the mouth 
immediately behind the lips. The tongue is in contact with the upper side teeth for most speech sounds. Sounds made with the tongue touching the front teeth. Tongue. When you say tongue, you see that tongue is touching your upper portion. So tongue touching the front teeth such as English, they are called dental. The alveolar ridge is between the top front teeth and the hard palate. This is hard palate. Its shape can be felt with the tongue. It cannot be shown but can be felt by you. These can be only seen by dentists with the help of a very small mirror used by them. Sounds made with the tongue touching here such as T, D, N are called alveolar. You speak T. Now see where your tongue goes to the hard palate. T, D, N. So you can understand I am talking about which organs. You can see these images. What I told you, you can just feel with these images. Now post alveolar and palato alveolar. Now tongue is very important articulator and it can be moved into many different places and in many different shapes and directions. It is usual to divide the tongue into different parts though there are no clear dividing lines within its structure but still tip, blade, front, back and root. So this use of the word front often seems rather strange at first. By this figure you can understand that in the first figure you can see how the lip is just touching the post in the position of post alveolar. Now we also have palatal and velar. The soft palate or velum is in a position that allows air to pass through the nose and through the mouth. Often in speech it is raised so that air cannot escape through the nose. The other important thing about the soft palate is that it is one of the articulators that can be touched by the tongue. While making the sounds k, the tongue is in contact with the lower side of the soft palate and we call these velar consonants. The hard palate is often called the roof of the mouth. Its a smooth curved surface can be felt with the tongue. A consonant made with the tongue close to the hard palate is called palatal. The sound in yes is palatal. These figures show how and uh, with the help of which organ the palatal and the velar consonants are produced. Now there are glottal consonants as well. For some consonantal sounds there may be a secondary place of articulation in addition to the primary that is dark lateral. So if we go to classify the consonants and then we can classify on five basis. They are first is air stream mechanism. We can classify them on the state of glottis. We can classify them on the basis of the position of the soft palate, points of articulation and the manner of articulation. Now there are also voiced and unvoiced consonants. Consonants may also involve vibration of the vocal folds as in the phoneme. Hud in the word voice, voice. Such consonants are called voiced consonants. While consonants such as f of the word fish, fish are referred to as unvoiced since the vocal folds are simply held open during the production of these sounds. Fish, fish. Manner of articulation means how the sound is made using the different places of articulation. Tongue placement, whether the sound is voiced or unvoiced and the amount of air needed. It stops air coming from the lungs is stopped at some point during the formation of sound. Some of these sounds are unvoiced such as pin, tin, kin. We are not moving any major part pin kin tin so some of these are voiced such as bust dust gust we also have fricatives like restricted airflow causes friction but the airflow isn't completely stopped unvoiced examples include 
Fin, thin, sin, shin, hit. Voiced examples include van, zoo, treasure. So you feel that in voiced consonant, you are supposed to move many parts. In unvoiced, the very less portion of the uh, organs are being used. We discussed fricatives. Now we have affricates also. They are combination of stops and fricatives. Cheap is an example of an unvoiced affricate. Cheap, cheap and jeep is the example of voiced jeep lips are coming together and a fricate is a consonant which begins as a stop also known as plosive characterized by a complete obstruction of the outgoing air stream by the articulators a buildup of air pressure in the mouth and finally releases as a fricative a sound produced by forcing air through a constricted space we have divided speech sounds into two parts, either consonants or the vowels. But it's not the case. We have the third category also that is known as semi-vowels. Semi-vowels are also consonants articulated with an open approximation. They are vowel-like in quality and function like consonants. We also have consonant cluster. Cluster is when two or more consonants of different places of articulation are produced together in the same syllable. You must note that clusters are determined based on the sounds, not the letter of the words. And initial clusters are usually formed by combining various consonants with the various phonemes like sleep, green, blue, etc. Medial clusters usually appear at the beginning of the second or the third syllable in a multisyllabic word. For example, we say regret. Regret. We write R E G, but we say R E R E. This is the sound. Apply. Approve. So final clusters are usually composed of a variety of phonemes, including. MP, NS, ST, etc. Like when we say desk, camp, mins, fast, bank, clusters can appear in the initial, medial, or final positions of the word. Lateral approximant produced by the obstruction of the air stream at a point along the center of the oral tract with incomplete closure between one or both sides of the tongue and the roof of the tongue. Then we have approximant produced by proximity that is closeness of two articulators without turbulence that is hard movement and friction like noise such as W. Affricate produced by involving more than one of those manners of articulation. Firstly, produce the sounds in the alveolar ridge then followed by or combined with fricative sounds such as T, T, Z, Z, Z. So you can understand that these are the part of the clusters. So to summarize, we can say that speech sounds described and classified in consonants and vowels and particularly in this module, we have discussed how the consonants are voiced and unvoiced, how they are produced with the various organs of the body because it is part of the human speech. And so we have discussed only human body, how various use of the lips, tongue, teeth and hard palate and soft palate, we produce various sounds and understand the language in a better way. You can practice and understand in practical way also. Thank you for visiting EPG Partshala.